What's up YouTube? Welcome to another video from Asperger's Growth. I've been thinking about why teenagers and adults on the spectrum are more likely to experience anxiety uh, during their everyday lives. Uh, apart from the genetic factors, because uh, I, I do believe that uh, people with autism are, are more likely to have like more more prone to uh, mental health disorders such as depression, anxiety and that kind of stuff. But in this video I want to focus on more of kind of the social social side of it. So firstly, uh, a long time ago when we were being hunters and we didn't have a lot of the brain power and stuff that we did nowadays, uh, danger was the main cause of stress or what we call anxiety in modern society. A lot of anxiety that comes from modern society um, is to do with feelings of being very uncomfortable, uh, worried or being very confused about the situation. And that's, and those, those three things are the reasons why autistic people are more prone to um, getting overwhelmed by anxiety and um, be more likely to have um, breakdowns. You see, I believe that the anxiety that um, people on the spectrum experience is, it stems from a uh, difference uh, mostly between the the world the, the, the world of society that we have and all the like the social norms and all the the general things that people take for granted in a lot of situations. So those things contrast a lot with the view that someone with autism may initially have on on the world and that can be quite a big source of um, anxiety for someone because there's a lot of confusion in that a lot of the things that people who aren't on the spectrum um, would initially um, already have built into them um, it's got to be learned and it's got to be forced upon people on the spectrum so we obviously live in a society based on people who aren't on the spectrum, obviously. So that means that everybody who um, who is autistic has to comply to those rules as well. And if and the, the problem comes with trying to comply the, with those rules, um, as I said before, um, confusion, co confusion, and um, being anxious about the situation can, is a it's quite a big factor when to do with breakdowns and anxiety and such. So a lot of the reasons for uh, the, all the anxiety and the stress is usually to do with um, misunderstanding and confusion about the situation. So if a person is forced into a certain way of living or certain like social standards then it's going to conflict with what, how they feel about the situation. Um, something that may be considered to be quite common sense and normal to, to a normal person, even, even quite a young person, may be quite alien um, and very hard to understand for someone with Asperger's. For example, uh, the topic of stimming, which is the the act of doing some kind of repetitive motion or something something repetitive uh, that gives a lot of comfort to someone when they're, they're feeling anxious or stressed about a situation. These stimming things, they, they usually develop quite early, um, but especially in like people with Asperger's, um, especially in like teens and adults, um, they tend to kind of peter out for 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 a lot of reasons. The main reason for the the stimming being petered out, because I think personally think that it's a really great tool for someone with autism to have. There's been a lot of situations um, where I've known people have told me and also experienced myself where there's there's quite a, a lot of stress on you and that you really want to to do it. Um, but the, the actual stress of people judging you and people looking down on you for doing it is, is a lot more scary and um, 
there's a lot more to worry about with it. So it ends up being kind of petered out during those years. So although it's accepted for someone with autism to do the stimming and it becomes an issue when, as I said, we get to the kind of the teenage years where people with Asperger's, so milder form and it's harder for people to to recognize someone who has Asperger's, especially as they get more old, uh, get older. Although if you do um, explain it to people and people do understand that it's something that's useful, um, it tends to be looked down on anyway, um, for obvious reasons, because it's, it's not a very attractive thing to do for a lot of people and it can you know, it can be signs of, mm, it's, diff it's difficult to, to explain that, but it's definitely not an ideal thing for normal society and making friends, uh, making relationships, etc. The stimming techniques that um, some people with Asperger's uh, acquire earlier on, as I said, peter out, um, a lot of that is to do with um, friends, uh, that's one of the biggest factors, um, especially when, when people reach teenagers and they start coming into uh, bigger schools, they'll, they'll feel a great need to fulfill their social interaction and obviously make friends and feel part of a group. Other people such as parents, teachers, anyone of authority, um, maybe not as much as friends, but they may encourage the reducing the um, the stimming, uh, mostly for social reasons, especially with a person with Asperger's, um, a person with um, high functioning autism it might be quite a bit easier for them to um, get away with avoiding social norms. Um, not not saying that it's a it's a bad thing and uh, I uh, spite spite in them but no it's a big I'm kind of going off on the tangent a bit here <laughs> but the the main thing that is important is that society forces um, people with autism to do things that are very uncomfortable for them for good or bad purposes, it depends on how you look at it, but it does significantly increase the difficulty of someone to get enjoyment out of the day, um, be stress free and get a lot of happiness. Um, other examples of times where the perceived reality of something on the spectrum is different to social norms and etc like that, um, would be the social rituals that people have, especially for making friends, it can also be applied to relationships, in an ideal world, um, it would be a lot more logical, you'd, you'd go up to someone, you'd like to exchange your information, um, see what they like, what you like, what they don't like, what you don't like and generally get a feel about how you feel about that person and it'll be a lot easier and a lot more simple and logical to just to ask to be friends or ask to go on a date straight there but in society there's a lot more kind of background noise if that makes sense there's a lot of different things and it's a lot it's a lot more confusing and if something goes wrong and the person with on the spectrum doesn't really understand the situation um, it can lead to a lot of kind of uh, feelings of insecurity and loneliness and even depression it could lead to that so this has just been a little bit on how I feel about the um, society's impact on anxiety people on the spectrum uh, it's just a little bit it's just a few thoughts I'm not 
a trained psychological professor or anything, but my experiences do go off me having uh, being on the spectrum and also meeting a lot of people and observing a lot of people on the spectrum. So I'm thinking of doing a no next video um, on autism, um, anxiety and the benefits that sport and exercise um, can give to someone on the spectrum and also a lot of the difficulties that come along with trying to do get involved in, in them kind of activities. But if you have any suggestions on content that you'd like me to do, stick it in the comments and I'll have a look at it and I'll definitely get around to making some content on that. So if you like the video today, hit the like button, give me a subscribe. It's a very small channel right now, so it would be good to get a few subscribers under the belt and get the, the ball rolling. Anyway, I hope you guys have had a good day. This has been Asperger's Growth. Thank you, YouTube.